Welcome to Spirit Alive. I'm Roman Fisher. Thank you again, my partners and friends across Canada. We are ready to roll with another program of teaching. And uh, if you're watching for the first time, you can catch us on YouTube and go to Spirit Alive, Thunder Bay, Ontario, and you will find us there. Or you could go directly to our website and find out different programs right there on our on our website and it's uh, spiritalive.org so we'll be right back after the program and pray with you even when bad things happen to good people and godly ones the Lord will save them and not let them be defeated by what they face I want to read you a story this same David here that wrote Psalm 34 is being spoken about in 1 Samuel chapter 30. I'm going to give you a little bit of background on this situation here. David and men were out doing their work and uh, protecting their homeland and doing different things. They found their city was attacked when they came home from their routine. And everyone was captured by the enemy. Can you imagine going to work, coming home, and every one of your family members gone because someone kidnapped them? Children, wives, and all their stuff was gone. And because it was so devastating to not only David, but all of his men began to turn, turn on them. Because he's the leader, he's making the decisions, and they're following him. So they said, we're going to kill this guy. And this, they cried all night until they couldn't cry anymore. And so they, they lost all energy. They're exhausted from working. You know, uh, you ever, uh, what is that word? Goes halt, this goes hungry, angry, lonely and tired. I know we got some program people here. They, they, they might know this. Hungry, angry, lonely and tired. Yeah, we've been there. Someone says uh, uh, fatigue makes cowards out of all of us. You know, you can get so drained in the littlest trial, you can't even have enough energy to face it because you got so weak. You let yourself so depleted. Let's go ahead and read the situation found in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1 to 6. Three days later, David and his men arrived home at their, the town of Ziglag. They found that the Amalekites had come, made a raid into Negev, and Ziglag, they had crushed Ziglag and burned it to the ground. They had carried off the women and children and everyone else without killing anyone. When David and his men saw the ruins and realized what had happened to their families, they wept until they could weep no more. David's two wives, Ahinoam and Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal from Carmel, were amongst those captured. David was now in great danger because all his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters. They began to talk about stoning him. But David found strength in the Lord is God. We can all become weak. David had no more strength. Sometimes in, in situations like this in our lives, we become so drained mentally, emotionally, and physically, and spiritually. But God has a vast supply to help us in a moment of time. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Now, I want to talk about in reference to when you get so weak that you need reviving for a few minutes here. Generally speaking, the word revival means to make alive again. Revival means a, another visitation. Something has happened before, he's doing it again. If you've ever had a revival as a Christian, you can have one again. It's not just a one-time experience. 
I remember when I was a, a young person attending uh, meetings in the AA program many years, I was there. 1977, I decided to quit. And, uh, and I went, uh, you know, I went many years, and I, I, I just wondered, I read, I studied, I became a student of the program, I read all the literature, studied it, and Mark I destroyed different books because I wrote so much on the different books. I wanted to get this, and I wanted to understand it. I, I wanted, became a student of it. I prayed every morning. I prayed every night. I got on my knees in the morning. I got on my knees at night. I thanked God. I prayed, and I did all the things they told me to do. Go to the meetings, and go to the counseling, and get sponsors, and be a sponsor. Go open the doors, and and make coffee and, and pick up all the butts and straighten out the chairs and call people and become a chairman and do whatever I had to do. Pick up people, go to the detox and go to the hospital and visit the, all the various places and just continually doing it over and over again. It's getting exhausted. And I read those books and, uh, and I read where Bill Wilson had an encounter and I said, I, I said to the Lord, I opened my, my book there, page 13, 14, and I read that chapter, and I read the, where it says that the, this man by the name of Bill W., he got a, an experience with God, but they call it a spiritual awakening. And I read some of the background in other books and realized he had, he had gone to a revival meeting uh, in a sawdust tent meeting. And when the preacher asked uh, for uh, people to come to get uh, born again, come and get saved. Bill Wilson went up and he got born again. He said he felt so good that he went out and drank again. <laughs> and, he, and he finds himself back in the institution. He's back in the hospital. He's dying again. He's, he's sick. And he said in his hospital bed, he finally got it. He says, you know, for the first time in my life, I wanted God in my life. I knew I was defeated. I needed God, and I wanted him now. And he said the room lit up. He had an awakening, a spiritual encounter. So as a young Christian, uh, I was about four years of sobriety, working very hard and, and, and not really being satisfied with, with what I was getting because it's putting lots of work into it. I said, why isn't the other people not talking about this spiritual I don't hear a lot of people talking about it. They talk about it in terms of uh, an intellectual experience. It's not an intellectual experience. It's a spiritual experience. Yeah. And I prayed out, and you know what? I had a visitation from the Spirit in my own room all alone. And uh, it changed my life totally, and I was revived. And I really realized this is something you can do. David found strength in his God. So revival means to make alive again. Many have various definitions of what a revival is, and for our own discussion here, we're speaking about getting refueled, refired, refreshed in the spirit. A revival also speaks of God pouring out his spirit where many souls Come to Jesus, that's, a, that's another kind of revival of salvation of souls. There's a supernatural power of God manifested. We see that throughout history where major revivals in our land and, and we see different moves of God. If you study that, you'll be excited. Loads of people got saved, healed, delivered, and inspired to serve God. So God is pouring out his spirit. And he started that in the book of Acts. And he's still pouring out. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, here's an outpouring of fulfillment of what was prophesied by Joel. Joel said in, in, the, uh, in, his, in his book, and Peter pronounced that statement and reannounced it and made a proclamation of what was happening because when people were filled with the Holy Spirit, they were acting strange. They were acting drunk, and they were speaking in a strange language. And people saw that. It spilled out to the street. And people said, these guys are on some kind of a new drug, if you would say it today. They're on some new wine, they said. And Peter got up 
And he explained what was happening. Because these charismatics, Pentecostals, were drunk in the spirit and acting drunk. Can you imagine that? And so somebody said, you know you're in a charismatic church where the pastor has to explain to people what's going on. A lot of times, you know, I was going to try and explain to people. People don't always appreciate it, don't understand it. They'll criticize it. The young man up here gave the, you know, uh, announcements. He starts speaking in tongues. Not everybody understands it or appreciates it. I was going to come up and say, this man was praying in tongues. This is not, this is not, you know, I was going to try to explain what was going on. You know, that's why I always tell our staff, you know, when you go up there and pray in tongues, make sure you explain things to people. Don't, you know, don't just allow people to be confused because not everybody understands what you're doing. Because you're watching online now, people do not understand it, right? They think we're crazy or drunk or stupid. But we have to explain that. And that's why sometimes I have, I'm opposed to having the cameras inside because not everybody understands us. And what happens here is our business. Not their business. So when I talk to you, I'm not talking to them. Sometimes some things are for you, not them. <laughs> you understand? Okay, so on the day of Pentecost, all believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like a roaring of a mighty windstorm. Let me tell you something. That's what I experienced when I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I heard... <laughs> came on me. And I went out, and everybody there disappeared. And I went up somewhere. It's like a mist came, and uh, I was in a cloud, and I, I could hear people. I lost consciousness of where I was. Then I lost that consciousness of that I actually was in a, in a meeting somewhere. And I was caught up there and think they could hear people. It started coming louder and louder, and then I came to myself. I was in a trance. And I know that's real. So when I went to school, I went to tell my pastor, well, my, my, my pastor teacher, my teacher pastor, or let me say, this, a teacher who was a pastor who had a PhD, he said to me, Roma, that's done away with. But I said, I had it. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's Roma Fisher. Thank you again, my partners and friends. You know, we're praying for you. We're believing God's blessing upon your life. I believe our partnership is a fruitful partnership, and we're reaching lives, and we're really uh, making a difference in people's lives because they're letting us know that we have been a blessing together. So thank you again, my friends and partners, for praying for us, for sending your donations to help us uh, in ministry. And so at the end of the program, we want to pray with you and whoever you are, if you're watching for the first time, thank you. Uh, watch again. And uh, we would like to uh, help you out any way we can. So tell other friends about our programs and so we can move on together in the ministry. So we'll be right back after the end of the program and we'll pray with you. The Spirit Alive Helpline is open during Sunday broadcasts. Counselors are available to answer your calls. Call us for prayer support and encouragement. We can also assist with partner services. You can make a donation, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually. Let us know how the program is helping you. We would love to hear from you. Call us at 807-285-9945. Thank you to our generous partners and volunteers. Together, we're sharing the spirit of faith. Miigwech. Did Jesus really rise from the dead? If so, what is the proof? And what does it mean for me? This Easter, we are offering the book, The Case for Christ, Answer Booklet. This book provides answers to the 20 most asked questions about the Christian faith, compiled by New York Times bestselling author, Lee Strobel, a former atheist and legal journalist. We are making this helpful resource available to you for a donation of any amount to Spirit Alive. If you would like to receive a copy for yourself or for a friend, please contact us using the information on the screen. 
or call the helpline during the Sunday broadcast. Thank you for watching and for supporting Spirit Alive. So when I went to school, I went to tell my pastor, well, my, my, my pastor teacher, my teacher pastor, or let me say, a teacher who was a pastor who had a PhD, he said to me, Roma, that's done away with. But I said, I had it. You know, you know, this is the way, this is the way uh, uh, Keith Moore says, you know, if you're in the water and you're taking a backstroke and you're, and you're going, and somebody says, there's no water in there, I'm taking the backstroke. It's real. When I was uh, early, my early uh, ministry, uh, early days of Christian faith, uh, 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 Mr. Beardy, Charlotte's dad came to my house. And he, and he uh, preached to my parents and had a small living room meeting. And while he got up, all, while Absalom, her father got up and he opened the Bible to Acts chapter, uh, Joel and Acts, he read that. When he said that the power of God hit the place. And I started speaking in tongues like you couldn't stop me. Like just, just, just pouring out, like, this couldn't stop, it seemed like. I was so open and praying in tongues and crying. This drunk, I don't know if you ever got drunk and you cried. How many of you got drunk and you cried? Anybody been there? Yeah, I was there many times, snot coming down and just crying away. Next moment, you're laughing. And that's what a, a drunk person in the, in the spirit is, is similar to that. But there's no effects. It's a, the better thing, right? So I'm, 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 I got filled. And that night, that evening, my dad, I saw my dad go on his knees for the first time in my entire life of all his 55 years. He got on his knees and accepted Jesus Christ. Amen. That's good, eh? And uh, he never went to church. Never went to church, and he started speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Now he's in heaven, and he said to me, uh, he said, uh, how am I ever going to find mom when I get up there, he says to me. And I heard the story of someone, he said, when you're in heaven, you go to heaven, if you think of that person and they're there, they come. And sometimes when you don't, they know what you're thinking, you just, you, they know right away what you're thinking. And so my mom went there before, you know, my mom was a little Catholic girl. You know, Catholics get saved. And, and she got saved, and she went to heaven and came back. And uh, I thank God for her experience because she told me growing up as a young teenage boy that I, I went up there, I, I saw heaven, I heard the angelic choir singing. It's beautiful. So don't ever... Don't ever mourn for someone who's died in Jesus, for sure. And you always have hope if they somehow believed in Jesus. Even our ancestors, my ancestors, never heard about Jesus. Some of them are up there. And uh, you, you got to study the Bible on this. But if you once you heard about Jesus, now you're responsible. That's a different story. <laughs> so anyway, I always wondered about that. Some of my ancestors never heard about Jesus. Jesus, God, uh, you know, where there's no law, the Bible says there's no condemnation. There's no, there's nothing to judge you from. How could you judge somebody from what they don't know? God judges you by your heart. That's how Abraham got born again. So, you want some more here? Just a little bit more. Okay, we're going to shut down soon. So don't shut off on me. Okay. It filled the house where they were sitting, verse 2. Verse 3, then what looked like flames of tongues of fire appeared and settled on each one of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. They began speaking in other tongues or in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. Verse 7 says they were amazed. These people there were amazed. They said, how could this be? You know, your natural mind with spiritual things, it don't make sense. 
like this. How could you give 10% of your salary away to God and God multiplies it back to you? It doesn't make sense. Well, it makes sense in the, when you think about it. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, you go to the bank, they give you something for it. Right? But God says, I want to multiply what you give me. Some things don't make sense in the natural. But here's what they said in verse 7. They were completely amazed. How can this be? They explained. These people are for, all from Galilee. So the apostle Peter stood up and addressed the crowd, and he said this. Now, what you see was predicted long ago by, the, by prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I'll pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I'll pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike. They will prophesy. We are in the last days, people. It says here in the last days, I'll pour out this. It's happening. But, you know, he's pouring his spirit out even now to renew you. We have to see what the Bible says. You know, we need a major revival in the church. We need a revival personally. Everyone needs to be re revived here because you get exhausted serving on your own. We want another encounter with God. Acts chapter 2, verse uh, 17 and 18 says, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Those last days, I pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike. They will prophesy. Times are refreshing. The Bible says when we repent of our ways, when we get off and turn, you know, no one can repent for you. You can do it yourself. We turn to God. Now, you don't have to get born again. You just have to say, Lord, sorry about that. I'm turning back to you. And that's the end of it. God forgives you instantly. You don't have to cry at the altar and weep. And I mean, you, you can if you want to, but you don't have to. You, you, can, you can repent wherever you are, right? You don't have to tell anybody about it. Just, just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Use First John 1, 9. Verse 19, Acts 3 says, Now re repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times of refreshings will come. We want times of refreshing. We need times of refreshing. Because life happens to you, and you get depleted of, of, of just energy. We need to be filled again as we did in the past and get filled, refilled again. It's like when I used to go to meetings before. I would, I would just get depleted for the week, and, and I go to my meetings, I get filled up again. And I, I stop going to meetings and I go back again. My sponsor tell me, go to a meeting. I go to a meeting, and I get revived again. And, and so that happens. We need, it's not automatic. There's some things that we do, and God wants you to, to revive yourself just as much as David said that he found strength in his God. And you can read his Psalms. He was quoting the Psalm. He, I mean, he, 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 he would, what he would do to get himself, he, he said he meditated. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, we all know this. The Bible says, you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. This power, these people were already born again. But the power came upon them to empower them to be witnesses, to serve. And sometimes we, we, if we don't give away Jesus, we lose something when we don't be the witness that we should be. Be ready to be a witness and tell people, give people an opportunity to say, you know what happened to me? God touched me yesterday. I got healed. Thank you for watching Spirit Alive. I believe this is a God opportunity, a God time of investment. I believe in the name of Jesus. Right now, you're at the right place, the right time. We want to pray with you. If you have sickness in your body, no matter what it is, no matter how severe it is, no matter how minor it might seem, God cares for you. The Bible says that Matthew 8, 17, that Jesus himself took your infirmities and bore your sicknesses. That the Bible says that in Matthew 8, 17. It also says in the New Testament, 1 Peter 2, 24, that by Jesus' stripes you were healed. That's past tense. According to the word of God, when Jesus was uh, suffering and, and took all that, the whips and, and died on the cross, that God laid your sickness and your disease on Jesus. And because of that, you were healed. And so I'm going to pray according to the scriptures that healing belongs to you. I, I have my faith out there. You just receive it right now. The Bible said, if two shall agree on earth as touching anything 
The Bible says they shall have it. That's found in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. So if just agree to receive, uh, I'm going to pray with you because I believe that healing will, will touch you and heal you and deliver you. So let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my friend and partner and every viewer that's watching, whether they're Christian or not, I pray in the name of Jesus, healing belongs to the people of God. And you told us to minister healing as minister of the gospel so that they will know that God heals and God is real. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, touch those ones that are sick in disease and body and are in pain, whether physical or emotional or mental. In the name of Jesus and everyone that's having spiritual problems, if it's demonic uh, sources, I command those spirits to leave. And I pray that healing will flow into their entire being in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Deuteronomy 28 verse 61 says, Every sickness and every disease is a curse of the law, but thank God, according to Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So I believe that and you believe it. So those of you that haven't had an opportunity to invite Jesus Christ into your life and to change your life, you can, be, you can be saved and you can have peace with God. The only way to have peace with God is to have Jesus Christ in your heart. The Bible says in Romans, Therefore we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So I thank God for you right now. So let's pray this prayer. It said, Dear God in heaven, say this prayer. It said, Dear God in heaven, I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of the world. I invite Jesus Christ into my life and into my heart. I believe according to the word of God that he is the savior of the world and I receive Jesus Christ as my savior and my Lord. I, I ask you, Lord God, to change me, forgive my sins, and I'm going to walk with you for the rest of my life. So thank you, dear God, for my salvation. And those of you that have been away from God and you... Uh, perhaps missed it this week or you're, you're, you're having a, a problem with some area spiritually, just lay down before God say, God, I'm sorry. And uh, I repent of my ways. I'm changing my ways. I know that you'll help me, even though it's been tough. I, I want you to help me. I'm giving this to you and give me your strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you again. We're going to see you again next week. Same place, same time on Spirit Alive.